News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGBO, AM 1290 and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. A rare all-day session at the House Saturday and hundreds testify. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Monday, April 13th. 2015. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Montana Morning, sponsored by a brand new new sponsor, AB Technology Solutions. Backup and disaster recovery, remote support and monitoring. Find them on the web at abtechnologysolutions.com. The Montana House held a rare all-day Saturday session to give hundreds of proponents and opponents of the CSKT Water Rights Compact an opportunity for their views to be heard. One proponent, CSKT Elder Patrick Pierre, spoke about how many years the tribe and its members have been working on the compact and how much the tribes have given up to reach a compromise that all parties could live with. And there's not going to be any changes in the producing water for irrigation and whatever else they need water for. There's not going to be re- no reduction. In fact, it's going to be just the opposite. Do we look at status quo? Perhaps that's what it'll be. It'll be the same as it was yesterday, the day before, the days to come. Chief Legal Counsel for the Governor's Office, Andrew Huff, says negotiations over the past two years have been hard for both sides of the issue. Those were tough negotiations, but I think we owe a debt of gratitude to all the people involved, to the tribal negotiators and the tribal council, to the state negotiators, and to the federal negotiators for their professionalism, their patience, their courtesy, and most of all, their expertise. For the opposition, speakers included Tim Orr, an irrigator from St. Ignatius, who's convinced that the compact will deprive his agricultural operation of water and put him out of business. The average requirement for alfalfa in these areas is 26 to 29 inches of, it, of irrigation water. On the average year, the CS and KT compact in the, gives in the mission area 12 inches of water. Author and Native American activist Elaine Willman testified about advice to all tribes in the country from a law journal out of the University of New Mexico. Her message to the tribes, 566 of them, is capture all the water you can. Water is a real rare commodity in the United States. Capture all the water you can and sell it as a part of your tribal economic development. Spokespersons on both sides claim that should their side not prevail, hundreds of water and irrigation cases will go to court, tying up water rights for decades and ending up before the U.S. Supreme Court. The man killed in a single vehicle crash on I-15 in western Montana has been identified as 84-year-old George Weisenberg of Williston, North Dakota. The accident occurred about 4.15 Friday afternoon between Cascade and Ulm. The patrol said there are indications the driver fell asleep at the wheel or had a medical incident. Authorities do not suspect any foul play at a fire that caused significant damage to a historic home in Butte. The fire occurred Friday night and remains under investigation. But Butte Silverboat Chief Jeff Miller told the Montana Standard there is nothing suspicious or criminal at the fire and no one was hurt. Montana State Senators denied a bill that would, get, that would uh, eliminate the Common Core Standards testing, according to a report by NBC Montana. Assistant Superintendent of Kalispell Public Schools, Dan Zorn, said the core standards have increased expectations over the years. There were some real increased expectations that went along with that. Many things that perhaps used to be expected of a fourth grader, now expected of a third grader, and, and vice versa. While some Montana politicians believe the standards give the government more control over local curriculums and more information from students and their families, Zorn says it's given teachers more freedom. We still have tremendous control of how we teach, what we use to teach the standards, what the standards have provided us are are targets. Montana adopted the Common Core Standards in 2011. Nearly 75,000 students take the annual exams. An environmental group says Idaho officials are overestimating the number of wolves in the state because they use sightings by hunters rather than relying solely on trained professionals. The Center for Biological Diversity says the number of breeding wolves reported by the state is 26. That's a steep drop from the 49 in 2009 and a likely result of about 1,800 wolves being trapped or hunted. However, state officials say the report released April 3rd by the Idaho Department of Fish and Game estimating 770 wolves as December 31st is, uh, is, if anything, too low. 
Friday at Fort Hood, Texas, former U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Patrick Ziegler of Rochester, Minnesota, was presented the Purple Heart for wounds he received during the shootings at the Army base on November 5, 2009. Ziegler was the most seriously wounded of all the shooting victims and was returning from a tour in Iraq when he was shot four times, once through the head. Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation spokesman Mark Holyoke explains how the organization became involved in Ziegler's story. It was shortly after that when he was he was lying in bed and he uh, was talking to a chaplain and he said, you know, I, I, I'm not in any shape to do it, but I'd really like to go on an elk hunt someday. I mean, he's a hunter, but he's never, you know, been on an elk hunt. Holyoke said word eventually got to members of the RMEF and that got the ball rolling. Somehow word got to Jim Zumbo. Zumbo, is a, he's well known in the hunting community. He's also a member of our board of directors. And then word got back to our CEO, uh, David Allen here in Montana, and um, he said, we're going to make this happen. Ziegler went on his hunt last fall and was able to take down a large bull thanks to members of the RMEF. He received his Purple Heart Friday at Fort Hood, accompanied by his wife and son. A 22-year-old Billings woman accused of huffing while driving with a five-month-old child in the backseat has pleaded not guilty. Christian Noel Costa has been charged with felony criminal endangerment, felony criminal possession of dangerous drugs, driving under the influence of drugs, and driving with a license suspended or revoked. She appeared via video in front of Yellowstone County District Court Judge Ingrid Gustafson from the county detention facility on Friday. The Billings Gazette reports that Gustafson reduced her bond from $7,500 to $1,000. Officers say they found several cans of air duster in the car, some empty. Officers made arrangements for the child's care. Supporters from several community organizations gathered in Lolo Friday for the long-awaited groundbreaking ceremony for the Lolo to Missoula Walking and Biking Trail. Missoula County Commissioner Gene Curtis says the biggest piece of the puzzle was the awarding of a $4 million Tiger Grant. It was a lot of uh, input from a lot of people, but it was a Tiger Grant. So, you know, it's a federal appropriation of our money that we spend on our gas tax, and here we go. So, we think it's a good investment. Gene Belangi Nye, who received the County Parks and Trails Stewart Award back in 2014 for her efforts in spearheading the effort, said she's been waiting decades for the trail to become a reality. She detailed her involvement in obtaining the Tiger Grant. Melinda Barnes of Bike Walk Montana called Jenny Sullivan and said, you've got to apply for a Tiger Grant. We had three weeks to get it rewritten. So DJ and A said they'd do it for $7,500. Jackie Corday, Jenny and I raised $7,500 in 45 minutes. Curtis said construction will begin the next couple of weeks and conclude by the summer of 2016. Our news talk time is 612. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Well, a little bit of a cool start around the area today as we bottom out in the 20s early this morning, but we will end up with a pretty nice day with a high of right around 67 in the Missoula Valley this afternoon and plenty of sunshine. I'm meteorologist Matt Gray for KCI 13.